This wealthy and successful lawyer finds himself in deep trouble after entering into an illicit relationship with his stepson. One morning, Anne is going home to change into her work clothes when she sees her husband Pierre hastily packing. In her presence, Pierre quickly informs her that his ex-wife Rebecca called him about their son Theo who was given a two-day suspension after getting into a fight with his math teacher. Because of this, Pierre has to go to Genoa to get Theo because he wants his son to move in with them. In the early days of Theo's stay, Anne is irritated by his carelessness and laziness as he often leaves the house in disarray. Despite this, Anne noticed notices that Theo has a good relationship with his half-sisters Angela and Serena. This is revealed when the two girls excitedly present Theo with a handmade keychain. As thanks, Theo praises it and hugs them. The next day, Anne is walking home from work when she notices a key ring in the driveway. He pauses for a moment, confused as to why it's there but he puts it in the bag anyway. Entering her daughter's room, she is pleased to see how Theo is not shy about showing love to the children, even following their wishes when they bond. However, when he notices Anne's presence, Theo suddenly gets up and leaves the room. That evening, Pierre comes home from work tired and angry. While eating dinner, he releases his frustrations by sharing his work problems. Anne diligently listens to her husband, but he tempts her to have sex with him to make up for the evening. In the couple's room, Pierre slowly undresses, but as he does so, he shares his doubts and insecurities. He tells Anne that he is bothered by Theo's earlier remarks to him, which bring out his aging self. According to Theo, Pierre adopted Angela and Serena to ease his conscience because he was not a father. Also, Theo believes Pierre to be the grandfather of the girls because of his age. Although Pierre thinks Theo is evil, Anne thinks otherwise. She thinks that because because Theo is good with children that is one of his most redeeming qualities. Upon hearing this, Pierre remains silent but becomes intimate with Anne. After the act, Pierre feels vulnerable because of his age, so he looks to Anne for reassurance. Anne reminds him to confirm that he is attracted to older men because they find them the most desirable. Pierre smiles quietly at his words. The next day, Pierre visits Theo's room and gently admonishes him not to smoke indoors. Theo complies enthusiastically, but Pierre enters his room to have a serious talk with him. Pierre reminds him of the hospitality they offered him therefore he hopes that Theo will receive reciprocate their gesture. The half-hearted Theo tells him that he will and asks his father to leave him because he is busy on the phone. In his attitude, Pierre asks him what he is busy with and Theo replies that he is working. A skeptical Pierre continues to ask about his work but Theo dodges his question. Therefore, Pierre expresses his doubts about his job and confronts him as a freelancer. Word of Pierre reaches Theon but he has no interest in engaging in his parasitic lifestyle. As a result, Pierre tries to take the phone from him, causing Theo to punch him. Hurt by Theo's disrespect, Pierre returns his phone and leaves the room. Soon after, Anne and her friend and Mimi arrive at the house to find it in complete disarray. She immediately contacts Pierre and informs him that their house has been robbed. While she is on the phone, Theo casually appears and asks her what happened. Anne gives him the necessary answers and tells him to quickly check the missing items in the room. As Theo leaves, Mimi can't help but comment that she thinks the boy is polite. Anne tells her that Theo treats her like she doesn't exist but she's fine now. The next day, Anne delivers good news to her client Sarah and her father Mr. Evert. According to him, the court allowed Sarah to be taken into custody. As a thank you, the man tries to shake Anne's hand but accidentally spills her coffee cup and soaks her paper and skirt. Mr. Everard apologizes but Anne assures him that everything is fine. After wiping off the liquid, Anne continues to reveal the news and reminds them not to waste the opportunity the court has given them. Later that day, Anne is changing out of her dirty clothes when she finds a key ring in Theo's pants. She is confused when she sees it because she kept it in her bag and didn't return it to him yet. Also, after breaking into the house, her bag is missing which makes her even more suspicious. Anne therefore confronts him but Theo acts indifferently. Anne has no choice and comes straight to him and asks how the key ring ended up in her pocket. Instead of answering, Theo expresses his displeasure at Anne's fishing. Regardless, Anne wants an answer from him, so she continues to press him for an explanation. Theo remains stubborn and does not regret breaking into their apart. Anne therefore threatens him that she will tell Pierre about her behavior, but Theo does not care. He even encourages her to call the police. Realizing that Theo will not give up, Anne negotiates with him, saying that she will not tell Pierre about what Theo is doing, but in return, he must integrate himself into the family. Anne will then see if she does her part. Immediately after the negotiations, Theo begins to come out of his shell and break his reserve personality. After seeing Anne get swimwear for her daughter, Theo rushes to help her and earn her stepmother's thanks. He asks her where the equipment is and Anne says she's going swimming with her children. Now that he mentions it, Anne invites him along and he readily accepts. During their excursion, Theo notices that Anne has not yet joined them at the river, so he invites her along. Anne refuses and says she's not in the mood yet. Theo playfully repeats his words about integrating into the family and earns her a smile. Before he can call her more, the girls tell tell Theo to get in the water again, which he quickly observes. Anne quickly gets up and decides to join them, not wanting to miss out on their fun. The next day, Anne hangs out with Theo on the terrace and strikes up a conversation with him, asking him if he misses Genoa. Theo tells him he won't because he hates the place and the people there. Anne encourages him to bring his friends to the house, but Theo replies that he has none. Anne shares that neither does she, which makes them laugh. Continuing, Anne notices Theo's tattoo on his arm and asks where he got it. He proudly tells her that he tattooed himself and offers her a tattoo. Anne, on the other hand, refuses because 
because she is afraid of possible pain. Suddenly, Theo grabs her hand and touches the place where she will get the tattoo. When Anne continues to refuse, Theo teases her touch near the elbow. Anne quickly removes the hand, but Theo tells her that a tattoo in that place is elegant. After persistent offers for a tattoo, Anne finally gives in and Theo begins their session. Despite the pain, Anne has fun with Theo. One evening, while Anne is busy at work, she hears Theo's voice along with hers. They confront her, so Theo introduces her to Amanda. After greeting, Theo quickly brings Amanda to his room, leaving Anne worried. A few days later, Anne leaves the meeting with the guests because she finds it boring. While at the stairs, he sees Theo getting ready to buy a pack of cigarettes. Theo invites her to join him and she accepts. Moments later, they go to the bar and share a drink. Anne, full of alcohol, can't help but mention Amanda in their conversation. She asks him if the girl is his girlfriend, but Theo denies it. For him, Amanda is just a conquest and they agreed to such a relationship. Now, the curious Theo asks Anne if her relationship with her father is true love. Instead of answering, Anne reveals that when she was young, she felt bad when her mother shared stories about running away with men. This prompts Theo to ask if his mother has many husbands and Anne confirms. This time, Theo turns the subject to her and asks if she was also involved with several men. However, Anne dodges the question and downs the drink. Theo suddenly receives a text, so he announces that he has to leave. Anne curiously asks if Amanda texted her, but Theo playfully dodges the question. Soon after, Anne returns home in a cheerful mood while Pierre worries about her. Pierre asks her where she has been, but Anne lies that she is going for a walk. This disappoints Pierre, especially since they distracted the company. He adds that he considers her sudden disappearance disrespectful to strangers, so he scolds her for behaving normally. Anne remains unmoved despite her words and instead says that everything is boring when they are together. Therefore, he hopes that Pierre will not become like this because he does not think that it suits him. The next night, Theo is watching a series on his phone when Anne visits his room. Therefore, he invites her to watch the series with him, which she readily accepts. As they watch, tension builds between them, leading Theo to kiss Anne, causing them to fall in love. As her afterglow fades, Anne's conscience haunts her. Therefore, he tells Theo to forget what happened and never do it again. However, Theo does not convince her when he asks if she liked the act. Although against her better judgment, Anne agrees but expresses regret. Theo calms her down and even playfully teases her, but Anne remains amused. As a result, Theo tells her that she is annoying and forces her to leave his room. A few days after the intimacy, Theo spends time with his siblings in their yard. Later, he walks up to Anne lounging in the sun and offers her a beer. When Anne accepts it, Theo steps up to her side and interviews her on a dictation machine. At first, Theo's questions begin innocently, based on getting to know him better. But as the interview progresses, Theo begins to ask Anne a suggestive question. He presses her on it being her first time, but Anne is uncomfortable, so she refuses to answer. Therefore, Theo wonders why he cannot answer her question. Therefore, Anne tells him directly that some things should not have happened. Now worried, Theo asks if she will join their relationship, but Anne lets him down when she denies what happened between them. However, Theo stubbornly believes that they are having an affair and kisses her. Again, he asks her for the first time, but Anne continues to refuse. Theo kisses her back in apology. The next day, Anne goes to visit Sarah as she has not been available for the past few days. He expresses his concern to her, but the girl behaves differently, which arouses Anne's suspicions. Suddenly, they hear her father's voice coming from Sarah's house and Anne notices a change in his behavior. Therefore, Anne invites Sarah out for a walk, hoping that this will make the girl open up to her. However, Sarah refuses and tells him to leave. Outside, Anne contacts child protection and asks for Sarah's case file. At Serena's birthday, Theo is helping Anne set the tables when she touches him. As he shows his love in front of his daughters, Anne breaks free from him and scolds him for his behavior. During the party, Serena approaches Anne and asks her to fill her water gun. Anne immediately obeys the order and goes to their shed. As she fills the bucket with water, Theo sneaks up behind her and hugs her despite her protests. However, Theo is persistent so that Anne loses her concentration and eventually gives up. Unknown to them, Mimi is outside and has seen their case. Disappointed, Mimi walks out but Anne tries to stop her. Despite her words, Mimi decided to leave. The next day, Theo meets Anne in their garden where he scolds her for her behavior yesterday. He then reminds her to keep it a secret to protect her family's reputation. Although Theo is down, he makes his promise to Anne who brings her relief. Later, Theo asks her if she is leaving him and she confirms. His relationship has to end, especially when he has a life ahead of him. Theo realizes that their relationship is coming to an end and asks Anne for a goodbye kiss. He fulfills her wish and after a while Theo says goodbye to her. Walking towards the house, he suddenly yells at Anne, still upset about their breakup. He declares that he is jealous of all her girlfriends and there he realizes that he no longer needs her. The next morning, Anne joins Pierre for breakfast when he announces that he has taken a week to reconnect with Theo. This upsets Anne, who is afraid that Pierre will find out about their relationship. However, Anne thinks it's great and admits that it might be good to repair their relationship. While the two talk, Theo watches them from the window. Later that night, Anne snoops on Theo's bedside table and catches him dictating. He tries to find a tape of their conversation about their relationship, hoping to be successful with it. When he finds the tape, he quickly takes it and leaves. The next day, Anne leaves her daughter engaged in their writing activities. Then he drives home, but his phone rings, so he tries to find his phone. This causes him to become distracted and accidentally crash his car. Therefore, Anne has no choice but to take a taxi home with her daughters. The 
trio is surprised to find Pierre's car already in the driveway. Anne's daughters immediately rush to their father and tell him about their mother's accident. Despite the information about the accident, Pierre is not worried about it. After some time, Anne offers dinner to her families, but she does not know Theo's whereabouts. Pierre informs her that Theo does not join them, so that Anne thinks he is with Amanda. Hearing that answer, Pierre confirms that Theo is indeed with him, but gives Anne a pointed look. During the meal, Pierre said they met mice on the way. However, Pierre's story is not typical because it suggests Anne's infidelity. According to him, mice are a nuisance because they keep reproducing therefore they must be taken care of. Hearing this, Anne falls silent and draws Pierre's attention. He asks why she is not eating, so Anne says that she has no appetite. In the evening, Pierre begins a conversation with Anne, revealing that Theo has confessed to their relationship. Anne remains silent, but when Pierre provokes her to tell her side, she tries to save face. Instead of telling the truth, Anne calls Theo lucky and a liar. Now worried, Pierre admits that he doesn't know what to believe at first, but with Theo's story, he wonders why he would say something like that if it wasn't true. Anne argues that Theo made up the story to get attention and it is unusual for him to be involved with her because she is a teenager. Despite his alibi, Pierre doesn't believe him because Theo actually went into great detail about their case. Anne storms out but begins to rub in Pierre's face all the effort she made to make Theo feel comfortable in their family. Arriving in their room, Anne quickly grabs her bag and continues packing. Pierre becomes worried and tries to stop him, but Anne does not listen. Her guilt makes her think that Theo exposed her to her as compensation for cancelling their supposed relationship. Pierre begs her not to go, expressing concern about who to believe. Anne takes the opportunity to say that her son is a monster and accuses him of breaking into their house. She further raises Pierre's sympathy by saying that she did not tell him about Theo's departure because she wants to give him a second chance and prevent them from damaging their relationship. Before he can finish his thoughts, she tells him that Theo is doing all this so that Pierre will leave Anne and finally get his father back. He also calls Pierre naive because he is easy to manipulate. Now Pierre is afraid of losing his wife so she hugs and kisses him in tears. The next morning, Pierre calls Theo into their living room and scolds him for accusing Anne of having an affair with him. Feeling betrayed, Theo stops and looks at Anne, who seems contrite. She then tells her father that she was not lying and advises Anne to tell her own story. But Pierre tells him to apologize to his wife. Anne confidently tells Pierre that she doesn't care about him and he scolds Theo like he's a restless child just looking for attention. This hurts Theo and makes him call her crazy. Again, Pierre tells him to admit he lied, not knowing how much it will break Theo's heart. Anne approaches Theo and gently encourages him to admit that he lied, a farce that makes him a saint. Rather than agree, Theo suddenly leaves. Moments later, at Theo's things are packed and ready to go, but his sisters don't want him to go. With everything out of his control, Theo gives them a big hug goodbye. At Anne's workplace, a co-worker informs her of Theo's presence. He invites her into his office and they talk about the incident earlier. Theo threatens to press charges against Anne if she does not tell Pierre the truth. Despite the threats, Anne does not agree, believing that their condition may not correspond to a crime. Furthermore, she believes that no one will believe Theo because she has no proof of their relationship. That's why he advises her to just tell Pierre that he lied. Realizing that his efforts are futile, Theo stomps out of his office. A few days later, Anne attends a meeting with Theo's lawyer, where the boy accuses her. Anne tries to appeal, using her connections with a lawyer, but he does not give up. Anne has no choice and accepts the lawyer's suggestion and stands up. Before leaving, he bids Theo a shake and goodbye. Later that night, Anne hears a loud bang downstairs, so she goes upstairs to check it out. Downstairs, he sees a drunk Theo who keeps banging on the door. She asks him why he is in their apartment, so Theo says he wants to see her. Confused, Anne reminds him that they have an agreement, but he refuses to admit it. Theo kisses Anne out of desire, but she tries to push him away. However, Theo's influence is too strong for her, so she finally gives in. After their intimacy, Anne returns to their room, and a sleepy Pierre asks her what all the commotion is about. Anne lies that a drunk Theo visited them and called a taxi for him. Pierre notices that he is cold, so Anne hugs him and buries her face in his neck. She then calls Pierre's name, but her husband silences her and tells her to go back to sleep.